we all have that one friend. You know, the guy who argues with himself, but he thinks he's arguing with you, carries on this whole conversation, gets all worked up and says a lot of things he thinks he's arguing with you, whether he's a friend from high school or a friend from work or a friend from one of your other social circles. And it turns out that's exactly what the liberals are doing. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. So a lot of things are happening today. In question period, of course, the bloc stood up and basically said they're ready to call an election. Great, let's do it. Apparently, they're saying that they can't now because the conservatives have shut down parliament. Now, I don't know if that's true. I think that it's just government business. I think that during an opposition day, the only day that they can actually bring forward a motion that they can still bring forward a non-confidence motion. Now, I could be wrong about that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Put it down in the comments. Love to hear from you because, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I'll admit it. But the other thing I wanted to talk to you about today is what the liberals keep on bringing up. They keep on bringing up this issue of abortion. Now, I'm not going to talk about abortion as far as what my personal feelings are whether I'm for it or against it, whether I'm pro-choice, pro-life, whatever. That's not really the issue of this video because guess what, people? It is not on anybody's platform. It is not on the conservative platform. It will not be an issue in the next election because the conservatives have no intention of bringing abortion to the forefront of any conversation, any debate. They're not going to change the law. But according to the liberals, they are. It's just not true. So the liberals keep on arguing. They're arguing with themselves, projecting that this is a conservative argument. But even that is not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today is freedom of expression and compelled speech. Today in question period, the liberals kept on bringing up this issue of compelled speech. Compelled speech is against the Constitution. It goes against freedom of expression. But they keep on bringing it up because they want people who are running certain clinics that are pro-life, who are giving people options to also promote abortions. That would be like telling Planned Parenthood that they have to give people the option of not aborting, that they have to talk about all of the ways that you can go through a pregnancy and give up the child to adoption or whatever. But nobody's talking about that. Nobody's forcing Planned Parenthood to do that, and nor should they, because that is what is called compelled speech. So I'm going to play a couple of clips from Question Period, and then we're going to talk about it. It's our body, our lives, our choice. Abortion care is health care. But the Liberals keep letting Conservative premiers erode access, while these Conservatives creep anti-choice legislation into Canada. Conservative cuts mean no family doctors, no midwives, no nurses to staff clinics. This isn't real access. Everyone should be able to get health care when they need it, including abortion care. Will the Liberals enforce the Canada Health Act to stop Conservative attacks on abortion? The Honourable Minister for Women and Gender Equality. Mr. Speaker, our message is clear. The right to an abortion and access to abortion go hand in hand, yet there are a growing number of anti-choice pregnancy crisis centers that use deceptive tactics to deter women from making informed choices about their reproductive health. That's why today I introduced a motion to require more transparency from these centers providing pregnancy counseling. Organizations that do not clearly or prominently provide this information to clients risk losing their charitable status. Status. This is about holding them accountable. This is about supports that women can rely on. With the help of their NDP puppets, of course, they bring up this issue that the Conservatives are entering legislation and restricting abortions. But the Conservatives aren't in power and they have no intention of bringing in legislation restricting abortions. 
And the response from the liberals are that they're bringing in legislation that requires clinics that are pro-life to tell women about abortion options. But that wasn't the only encounter on this topic. The Honourable Member from Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last week we found out that an ex-Conservative MP left his party after seeing the increase in the number of anti-choice MPs in the caucus. Anti-choice organizations that support those MPs use deceptive tactics to push women away from making informed choices and accessing a full range of reproductive care through so-called pregnancy crisis centers. Can the Minister of Women and Gender Equality and Youth please share with this House what our government is doing to require more transparency from pregnancy crisis centers who encumber a woman's right to choose by providing biased and unscientific counsel? The Honourable Minister for Women and Gender Equality. People have the right to make informed decisions about their own bodies. Across the country, we are seeing anti-choice pregnancy crisis center undermine a woman's right to choose. So today, I tabled a motion to require more transparency from charities providing pregnancy counsel. And if they do not, they stand the chance at losing their charitable status. Women have shared stories with me about how they have been felt, they have felt when they've walked into these centers, how they felt shame, how they felt guilt, and how it's been at the most difficult time in their lives. So Mr. Speaker, this legislation ensures that no women will endure judgment or pressure from groups that restrict their freedom. So the Liberals in question period are making this big deal out of abortion. And about these clinics that are trying to help people through a challenging time in their life, maybe an unwanted pregnancy. So this group of people, this clinic, or these group of clinics are giving people, giving women options, but it's not the option that the liberals want them to give. So the liberals want them to add on to what they're giving, the option of having an abortion. But that goes against the principles or the beliefs of this clinic. Again, I'm not arguing for or against pro-choice or pro-life. What I'm talking about today is freedom of expression without compelled speech, because compelled speech is a violation of your freedom of expression. But the liberals clearly think that is okay. They clearly think that they can tell you What you have to say, that is clearly a violation of our freedom of expression. Nobody can tell you what you have to say. Nobody can force you to say anything you don't want to say. Nobody can tell you that you have to agree with a particular point of view. Imagine, for example, that the shoe was on the other foot. If it was conservatives telling the liberals They had to tell people about conservative values. That wouldn't fly too well, and nor should it. Everybody has a point of view that they are allowed to express. You cannot tell a church, for example, that they have to agree that abortions are a good thing. You cannot tell a church, for example, that they have to perform same-gender marriages. You cannot, for example, tell somebody who believes that there are two genders that There are multiple genders and that they have to agree to that. Just like you cannot tell somebody who believes that there are multiple genders that they have to believe that there are two genders. You see, it goes both ways. What the liberals are trying to do is they're trying to tell you what to think. And that is wrong. But that's my opinion. I'd love to know what you think. Put your comments down below. And while you're at it, please like this video, share with your friends and on social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification so you never miss another video. Oh, and please join me on Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Pacific time for my live stream, where you can join in on the conversation. This week, however, I will be doing it on Wednesday because Thursday's Halloween and I don't want to have to run upstairs, answer the doorbell, give out candy during the live stream because, you know, kids just might come by the house. Also, I do teach the Canadian Firearm Safety Course, which is a prerequisite for getting your firearms license, also known as a PAL. And you do need a firearms license to either purchase or possess a firearm in Canada. But the Canadian Firearm Safety Courses are also really good courses to have under your belt for the purposes of employment and just general knowledge. So if you think you'd like to take one of those courses and you reside on Vancouver Island or you're just in the area for any length of time, 
please look me up. I do have links in the description of this video to my website where you can sign up for the Canadian Firearm Safety Course. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.